Welcome to the Payback Period Online Classroom. This episode builds on what we found in the Lifecycle Cost Online Classroom. A summary of this is at the bottom of this table, where we have the capital costs of both the Nissan Pulsar and the Nissan Leaf, the annual cost and the resale value. And this is provided in the summary table. As we discussed in the Lifecycle Cost Online Classroom, the capital costs of the Nissan Leaf are significantly higher, but the annual costs are lower. Which begs the question, what's the payback period on buying a new electric vehicle? So to calculate the payback period, we look at the costs over each year. At the beginning, the Pulsar and the Leaf have significantly different costs, but at the end of each year, the annual costs are added together to come up with a total cost. As you can see, the Nissan Leaf over a 10 year lifespan comes out just ahead of the Pulsar. When graphed, you can see that the payback period on the electric vehicles occurs just after the ninth year but both options cost about the same. One of the things we didn't include in the life cycle cost online classroom was inflation. So if we consider inflation as a standard 3% per year, and it's worth noting that this is likely to fluctuate, we can take the capital costs are in today's dollars, but the annual costs will change over the 10 years. If we take this into consideration, the payback period for the EV is slightly less. A further consideration we could take, let's for example say that the price of fuel and the price of electricity change at a different rate to the cost of inflation. Here the costs of fuel and energy have been separated and are increasing at a rate of 8% per year rather than 3% per year. As the Pulsar consumes more fuel, looking at the payback period in this scenario, it's reduced to 8 years. All of that being taken into consideration, the costs of both vehicles are relatively similar. But what if we, instead of buying the car outright, which is unlikely to happen anyway, we consider the loan that might be required to buy the car? Taking a repayment rate of just under 7.5% on both of those, on both cars, and ignoring loan establishment fees, and ignoring any loan establishment fees, there is the added factor of interest over the life of a five-year loan. If we consider looking at the EV option in both the outright or the loan version, buying the EV outright over the life cycle of the car is a bit cheaper and you get your payback period in a little over four years. However, the end cost is still pretty similar. And if you don't have $40,000 to buy a car, then buying the car through a personal loan could be a sensible option. There are some further considerations in this payback period analysis. Could we find savings elsewhere? Could we reduce drastically the upfront cost by buying a second-hand vehicle? Should we consider the risk of major maintenance at least once within that 10-year period, such as the cost of an extra set of batteries or the cost of a new engine? Could we do some of the maintenance ourselves and reduce the cost of maintenance over the life cycle? Now that we understand the payback period, we can go back to our design and try and improve the assumptions that we've made in our system. That wraps up the payback period online classroom.